extreme is I uh, lead our business development efforts, our marketing, our supply chain, product operations, and also IT. So as an IT leader, an operations leader, what Bob just was talking to really resonates. We're seeing that in our own organization. We're seeing that the transformation is not digital transformation. That's a, as I mentioned before, sort of overused term, but it's company transformation. We've gone through that transition quite a bit, led by operations and IT, becoming the center of excellence. And we had to upgrade our entire infrastructure, really with a gun to our head, to transition through these M&A deals, but now carry on that sense of urgency as you go forward. So uh, I really, you know, the, the numbers you put up there in terms of the transition, people being in a security posture today, you know, a la the Marriott story and others, um, but the forward looking is less about being on your heels and more being about jumping forward and leading that discussion and engagement. And we see that, that message growing, that age of acceleration, digital transformation. The conversation is accelerating. Our customer advisory board two years ago said, oh yeah, it's plumbing, uh, it's driving expense, it's efficiency, da 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 da. The stories this year are connectivity is critical for the engagement with the fan, the customer, the end user, the patient, the whoever, and they're at the table and they're part of the decision making and it's part of the architecture from the beginning because I think organizations have learned you start off the great marketing idea or kind of, you know, connection idea with whoever it is, the customer, the student, the patient, and then they realize they didn't bring the technology along and you have to do that step in step. So thanks for sharing that. One of the fun things about this role is I get to talk about customers, customer stories. And Ed talked about, hey, we're a big enough company to do business, we're the right size company to do business with, we're large enough that we're de-risking your uh, investment or reason to invest in us, but we're small enough and malleable enough to work with you. So here's a quick, quick anecdote. Um, FedEx, large customer, lots of unique deployments, working on IoT. One of the most unique deployments is they put an AP on a drone and they fly the drone over the plane after it lands and they're transmitting the data on what packages are on the plane prior to them unloading the, the plane. 15% increase in efficiency. Who put that drone and AP together? Us. Is it regulated? No. <laughs> Can you buy it? No. Does it work? You bet. So that's just one of the fun stories we get to tell. So I'm gonna uh, invite or, or give an introduction on our three panelists. And if you would, I'll call your name and just come on up, please hold applause till, till we welcome everybody just to carry it over. So my first guest, or our first guest, is Akio Suguno, Sugeno, hopefully I didn't totally destroy that. And he's from the New York International Internet Exchange and he's been there 29 years. All of your traffic is likely going over his network, so be careful what you're doing right now because Akio's watching you. And uh, he, he's a data center customer, uh, utilizes a lot of the legacy or heritage brocade technologies. Our newest platform, the SLX platform, is working within that environment. So Akio, please come on up. Thank you. Yeah, I guess we will apply then. I was going to say hold it, but it sounds better. Thanks, Akio. Uh, you want to take the first seat? All right. Next, Jason Jones from the Stonington Public Schools. So Jason's been at Stonington for 15 years. The school system looks after about 2,200 students, 469 admin uh, and teachers. Um, they've been a smart OmniEdge, so that solution pillar around smart OmniEdge, utilizing XMC as the single pane of glass and you have some really interesting fun facts. So he makes his own sour, or sourdough bread and you grow your own yeast, which I'm still trying to figure out how you do that, but that's pretty amazing. So welcome, Jason. I hope you ask. Uh, Bob, I hope you asked that question, how do you grow your own yeast? Um, All right. We'll see if we can fit that in. Yeah. And then finally, we have Steve Piazza from the New York Jets. And whenever I talk about the Jets, we also have to note the Giants because 
they do share the same facility, if anybody doesn't know, and uh, they make decisions together. So we're very pleased to have both the Jets Giants as customers. And Stephen has been there for 20 years, 20 seasons. He said he's the father of four girls, three human and one dog. Uh, the retired Greyhound racing dog, which is pretty cool. So the Jets utilize our technology uh, at MetLife. They utilize our technology and solutions across the practice facilities, and it's the Smart Omni Edge and the Access Lair and XMC as well. Please make, welcome Steve. Thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Bob. Just let's. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, have, have a seat, please. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you all for for taking the time out to come and share your stories with everyone here. I know this is probably a, one of the highlights of the day, so they get to hear directly from their peers about the how they're using the technology and, and so forth. I thought since a lot of the time, and, and we talked about today and what I started talking about were some of the key initiatives, they would start at that high level first and talk about some of these initiatives, which ones are impacting you and your network environment, and talk a little bit about that. I know from talking to you previously, Steve, we'll start with, you've got the mic, so you get to start, you get sure. to kick things off. You had talked about the cloud mm -hmm. as being one of, the, one of the big initiatives that have impacted your organization. So why don't you talk a little bit about that, if you could. Sure. Um, we've recently forayed into the cloud, uh, mostly in a hybrid setup. We're doing a lot of DR. Um, we had an initiative from upper management uh, to come up with a DR plan that was not um, storing our data somewhere close to us. So our okay. data currently is uh, backed up near the stadium. Um, okay. And if you don't know the location, we're in Florham Park, New Jersey. So it's really only a 30 minute drive. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for um, ag agnostic geographic location. Um, so we have a good partnership with Microsoft and we did um, some Azure work up there. Okay. And uh, we use our backup software to actually replicate our VMs as well as all our file data up there as well on a, on a nightly basis. Um, on top of that, we're also uh, looking and doing some analytics up there. Okay. So we have, from the football side of things, as well as the business side, a big initiative to look at data. I'm sure that's the case across the board. And um, on-prem, being able to uh, spin up workloads was somewhat of a challenge because uh, the guys they have doing this work really push the limits on what needs to have, how quickly they need to have these results. Right. So we, we turn to the cloud for that as well. Um, we're able to now scale that up, scale that down whenever they need it. We're very seasonal, as you can imagine, so it, it's a real benefit for us. And then lastly, I'd say uh, the cloud has benefited us in the sense of collaboration. We're an Office 365 customer. The collaboration and the features that it offers all our departments, through from football, through sales, uh, accounting, um, you name it, we're doing it. And uh, it's definitely opened up uh, our eyes to what can be done, and it just keeps growing Fantastic. every day. So. Fantastic. And I assume that's all going through IT, no shadow IT. Correct. No, no one yeah, going we, we, spinning well, up their Well, as far own. as we know, yes. As far <laughs> as you know. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So same to you, uh, Jason. We had talked earlier, I think, and you had said that you had a little bit of digital transformation that's been going on, and also cloud had been impacting. So in the school district, right, serving a lot of different students, faculty, et cetera, administration. Maybe you could talk a little bit about how those initiatives have been impacting your network and your environment. Certainly, certainly. And um, I mean, sitting between uh, an NFL team and uh, the internet exchange, we, we, we have a, a modest and humble environment, certainly, but uh, for us, it started with uh, our administrative team wanting to uh, do some uh, data decision, uh, uh, get some data decision results. Uh, we wanted to expand curriculum. Uh, a, a lot of us in this room had grown up with a very linear model of education, sitting in a classroom, learning from books. Uh, it's a very dynamic model today, obviously. We're putting devices in the hands of students uh, tenfold at a, at a, you know, a, a very fast growing rate. So uh, creating an environment, that, that transformation really required us to up, you know, step up our game in a, in a, in a hurry. Um, and for us, it, it really uh, was driven from uh, curriculum, being a, a, 
you know, our business model is curriculum. It doesn't give us, you know, a whole lot of, you know, resources in terms of money to, to make these decisions uh, quickly, but we did. Um, we were able to jump up. We, we also leverage uh, Azure for disaster recovery as a service that we uh, move a lot of our workload to the cloud in the off hours just uh, to, to get it off the network. But really, it's that delivery to the end user, to, to the students, to the teachers, uh, to be able to um, deliver curriculum. Excellent. Very good. Akio, I know, so you've got a little bit of a different environment mm -hmm. than the other two right. panelists here, uh -huh. but maybe you could talk a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of digital transformation and what's really starting to impact the exchange these days. Okay. Uh, let me start with what exchange point is a little bit. The world is too large for one carrier to cover. So I checked this morning, but there are currently 63,000 networks are connecting to each other. That forms the internet. They, they need a meeting point. The, our exchange point provides the in, uh, meeting point, one of the largest. We have about 600 gig bit per second in peak. We have 200 customers. Be, good part is we have lots of customers like Google, Apple, Facebook, yes. you know. If we don't do good, don't do good, you know, CTO, VP, call me anytime. That's the bad part. Right. So now, Currently, information on paper is transformed in digital, but uh, now experience also be transformed into digital, like a virtual reality. Mm -hmm. So our customer is to go, to go in towards directions. So initially, like two or three years, years ago, customer demanding 10 G ports, mm -hmm. but uh, now they're demanding 100 gig ports or four, even 400 gig ports. So we have to make sure we provide enough speed at the latest later. See, that's our challenge at this point. Got it. Yeah, and you said you're talking about VR, so all the video yeah, yeah, yeah. traffic that's really starting to increase that bandwidth across the, the yes. internet, right? And when you, especially when you see this as well in, in service provider networks as well, the amount of voice traffic compared to the video and data is just being dwarfed. So same thing that's happening in, yes. in your organization as well. Interesting. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. We talked about some of the industry trends, but everyone's here to see and hear about extreme. So let's start by, and we'll go in the reverse order this oh, time. Okay. Let's, we'll, we'll talk about the extreme environment. So if you could, if you could share with the audience what your extreme environment looks like, and then maybe talk about some of the key feature functionality that you rely on to keep your environment running well and to deliver that great okay, customer so, experience. So quick, so we, Currently, use Extreme's router, SLX series, the router basically. Mm -hmm. The reason is we need high port density, especially 100 gig ports. We need hundreds of hundred, uh, gig, hundreds yeah. of gig ports anyway. And also, it must speak MPLS, VPLS, because layer two architecture is so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Okay. To make sure we can run IP, but on the top of it, we can run VPLS. And the uh, XLX does the job. Also, important thing is customer support. Customer mm -hmm. care is phenomenal. I always rely on you know extreme team. One call, they respond. That's what I want to know. <laughs> Very you know, satisfied. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. So, Jason, if you want to go through this, do the same thing. Talk about your environment. So I know you've got. I don't know how many different school systems, the physical infrastructure, what that looks like, what you're using, and again, thinking about what some of the key feature functionality that you leverage. Sure, so um, one of the important things that we had to start off with was uh, interconnecting our campus. We have seven buildings. Uh, the goal was to move from gigabit, a gigabit network um, and uh, get to a 10 gigabit network to be able to deliver the amount of bandwidth that we need at the edge. So for us, uh, we had to start with the core infrastructure, uh, building upon summit switches, building upon um, uh, analytics to see how we were moving data, uh, and then really uh, amping up our wireless. We, we jumped to uh, our high school, essentially, as our flagship. Uh, jumped to uh, AC a few years ago, and we saw, and, and it's funny, as we saw the amount of you know new bandwidth available, uh, we saw more people consuming it on more devices. So, 
We built it, fortunately, big enough to, to handle the workloads, but now we're seeing we're starting to meet certain thresholds and uh, we don't quite have the density that we had anticipated. So that's one of the things that uh, you know are some challenges. As we moved on, uh, we, we are heavily uh, virtualized to the desktop. Uh, we run uh, 3D CAD, we run uh, you know, Adobe uh, products and deliver those over a virtual network. network. Uh, we're one of the few high schools to actually do those types of technologies uh, and deliver that in, in a curriculum model. Um, our goal is to, right now, uh, give a, a client to every student and every teacher, no matter what client, be it a browser, be it a hardware client, uh, and then continue to deliver those services. So services for us, we're, we're almost like a service provider uh, and, and utilizing uh, extreme technologies has helped us to leverage a lot of the, the, the services that we deliver. At the same time, um, creating those relationships with su our support team, our sales team has been critical for us to, uh, to make this leap. Excellent, and I'm guessing the analytics comes in handy when you're trying to rein in 14 to 18 year olds and their internet activity. Yeah, I'll, I'll give a quick story. So we we had been having issues uh, prior to onboarding analytics and we were having denial of service attacks. Uh, just, uh, uh, we knew it was a botnet, we, we could tell where you know, it, its origination point, we couldn't tell how it was happening in, in, in the building. And analytics gave us the ability to find down to the AP which room it was coming from. And I happened to walk in with uh, uh, our, one of our local police officers and one of the students yelled out, dude, shut it off. That's the, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the guy. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Oh, boy. So coming back to you, Steve, again, same type of thing. If you could talk a little bit about your environment and some of the, you know, the key feature functionality that you leverage from Extreme to ensure that you've got your, everyone satisfied. Sure. Um, so at our practice facility, we have around 2,000 ports. Uh, we service about 300 employees. That doesn't include players. We have a lot of technologies going on. Um, about two years ago, we switched from a, pro a different vendor over on the wired side, and then that following training camp summer, uh, we went wireless as well, both inside the facility as well as outside on the fields. Uh, the transition actually was very, very seamless. Um, the partner we used, the integrator, was excellent the entire time. The back-end support from our rep was, was fantastic. Um, we, the types of applications we push on this network uh, range everywhere from playbooks, obviously, that are digital at this point, um, to medical EMR, uh, electronic medical records that we have for the training department, uh, things that they need quickly, playbooks, all that kind of good stuff. And then obviously on the business side, we have everything from the financials that we still have on-prem and uh, football, I should say, go back to football video as well. So it's kind of interesting because back when we, uh, and I, like I said, I've been there 20 years, um, when we first started, the requirements to run football video required at least a one gig pipe. Yeah. And they were like, you never can run this ever on wireless. And at this point, we can run this stuff over the wireless now, which is really nice. Um, and we never were able to do that before. So it's been a, it's been a good transition for us over the last two years. And uh, me and my staff is, uh, have uh, really adopted it well. That's fantastic. And I imagine the pressure is just even a little bit higher. In, in most organizations, you've got some type of hierarchy and you've got the executive team that you have to make sure you're delivering a level of service to. And in this case, you've got, what, 52, 53, <laughs> basically, players very and high level so players. The, more and, so and the, the coaches. Staff, I would say you're even that, more demanding than anybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's a weekly thing. Obviously, uh, there's really no downtime. You have guys that are sleeping in their, sleeping in their offices and it's just a 24-7 operation at this point. There is, I know we referenced before, on game day it is a four-hour window, but outside of game day, there's a lot that the network needs to do. It has to stay up. Absolutely. It has to be transparent to those users so they don't ever complain that this is too slow, this is skipping, I can't pull a file, those type of yeah, things. It's really become the dial tone for the business, right? Totally. Like, that you're running the Wi-Fi, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So. All right, so we've gone through, we've heard a little bit about your environment. We know you've got different levels of use of the technology. Now's where you get to share a little bit of what challenges you may have had and how are they resolved. So either be it in deployment or at some time over the course of the history of, of working with Extreme, go ahead and you know 
air out? What issues did you have? How did you get them solved? Yeah. Uh, I, just thinking about that, the biggest one we had to date was probably that deployment of Wi-Fi outside. Mm -hmm. As you know, outside is really tough to actually cover. I mean, radio waves are going everywhere. There's a lot of interference. We're near an airport where we're currently located. So that was a very big challenge. Fortunately, we had the support um, behind us to set this up and then have that support there on the first day of camp to actually change radio strengths, re-aim APs, kind of do a full walkthrough to make sure that every customer that was coming, all the fans, and we typically would get on a big day, around 1,500 fans out on the fields, um, make sure that they were getting a good experience. So that was a big challenge, but we were able to, to get through that by, by you know, using all the resources that we had through Extreme and the partner. Yeah, I think Extreme's got a, a little bit of experience in helping people out they in sure stadiums did. and with fans and yeah. so forth, so that's fantastic. I'm glad that worked out. Yeah, so for us, um, internally challenges really were delivering on expectations now that we have this huge network. It's like everybody thinks we can do just about anything now. Um, so we, we, do, we do go through that process of trying to, to rein it back. Um, with my extreme team, I think that I, I, I started off as a, an Enterosis customer, uh, worked with a group, uh, GTAC, right out of New Hampshire, essentially got on a first name basis with a, a, a lot of the group. And then I saw the company start to grow. It was this modest company, um, you know, some of your competitors who obviously were bigger. Uh, we, we made the decision to go with Extreme, but we, we started to see the growth of this company. And I chose the company to be, a, you know, a, a small company because of the intimacy, because of the relationships that I created with uh, my team. And then you know, over the last five or six years, that team is, has changed a lot. And I think that's, that's a challenge just for us as a small organization, trying to get to know uh, and, and utilize the resources that Extreme has to offer with us. Uh, there's a lot of new faces, obviously. Everybody's been, uh, you know, overwhelmingly supportive, uh, which I do appreciate. Again, as a, as a small market customer, um, we don't always garner the attention because we don't have a, you know, a, a pattern of spending habits that maybe other uh, uh, customers would. But at the same token, we, we get the same level of support, which I appreciate. Yeah, so when you're talking about the change of people, mainly you're saying on the sales side more so than, like GTAC's been, been GTAC has been you. consistent, yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing is the, the transformation EOS to XOS operating systems, yeah. uh, that has been, somewhat of a challenge just because it creates now a new learning curve for, for me and my staff, really. Absolutely. And are you taking advantage of any of the training sessions that Extreme has put on for the new operating system to get the staff up to speed? Yeah, so we're, we're starting to take advantage of that okay. as well as some internal uh, uh, enhancements on, on managing projects. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons we chose SLX over other product is the operating system is based on Linux, mm -hmm. so we can write code. So network operation automation is one of the next new challenge for next year. That's why to eliminate human error here. You know, that's what we want anyway. Okay, yeah. very, very good. Yeah. And so far, I know you had said earlier one of the, the reasons, but also as far as when you do have challenges, it sounded like your experience with GTAC has been relatively positive as well. Very, very positive. I can't even call, you know, Navio. <laughs> His answer is 99 percent. I'm at the airport. <laughs> That's the way that he sounds. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Very good, very good. Um, so, as you think about your environment today, you've you've given a great synopsis of where you are today and and how you're using the environment. What comes next for all of you? I think some of you, some of you have just made big investments and deployments, but what's the next big challenge that you're looking to solve for the network moving forward? Where do you see the next issue that you need to get your hands around and start getting ready and preparing for? Probably more ports, because now, as you mentioned before, our customer is demanding to connect to cloud, mm -hmm. but that customer is looking for more lower speed, like 1G or something. Mm -hmm. So I need a nice mix, because SLX is towards for higher speed. Mm -hmm. So I need a more density for lower speed. That, that's kind of challenge, that's why. Okay, so yeah. building out the density in the lower end, so, right. so more people yeah, connecting more to nice the cloud. Balance, right? All right, yeah. excellent, sounds good. Jason, how much? Yeah, so for us, it's it's automation and the ability to um, 
help expedite the process for us. Um, the, our current methodology has really been, uh, we, we, we get a request for new services, we onboard a device, um, we assign policies, ports, and things like that, uh, automating that process for us to expedite that process, be, be a little bit more agile. I'm, I'm working with my staff now on uh, just project management uh, agile methodologies. For us, turnover and turnaround is, is, has always been a burden. Uh, the time to get that end user or that end user to, to use and, and onboard them for that piece of technology is not as quick as, again, you know, these new expectations make it uh, harder for us to try to expedite these things because there's, it's, it's overwhelming for such a small staff. But that's, that's us. A automation is key for us. Right okay, now. so getting more automation. And I, I think, obviously, Wi-Fi 6, right, the new, the new marketing term, which is, which is great because it's one better than 5G, right. right? So if there's any competition there, you've got Wi-Fi 6 now. Right. Um, are you thinking about why? So I know you said you had AC deployed. Any plans for Wi-Fi 6 in the future? So Wi-Fi 6 with uh, any new deployments uh, uh, is definitely going to be a consideration for us. Um, again, as we, we onboard uh, more applications in the enterprise, more resources needed, uh, we're going to definitely need uh, more bandwidth f to the end user for the wireless clients. Yeah. OK, yeah. very good. Excellent. Plans for us for next year include expanding out, let's say, in the stadium. We're going to. We saw this morning, right? The the plans for that. Yeah, that's a big announcement. The um, in addition, we have uh, a network that's connected to us as well through a point to point at our floor, from Florham Park to the stadium, and that's running legacy switches. So we're going to upgrade that entire infrastructure from the core and the edge. So that'll be happening. And then I want to really look into the security side of things and what Extreme can offer as far as on the local land to find abnormalities that uh, happen due to, you know, uh, intentional or non-intentional uh, type of activity, yeah. Absolutely, and are you looking at any of the analytics components as well, especially when you, when you roll out into the, the yeah. stadium and, and... Potentially, potentially. I'll tell you, the analytics has done a, a great deal of service to us at the stadium. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, we're looking to try to see what our fans are doing, yeah. and uh, we could kind of use that to fuel a lot of our sales team to go out there and try to find those sites that people are going to, uh, to maybe become partners with us and, and kind of become uh, succinct with our fans to make sure, you know, we know exactly what our fan base is, is doing, you know, and yeah. uh, it's definitely a valuable tool. And, and when they're doing it. And right? when they're doing so it, exactly. looking at times during the game, the Exactly, time, all that data is, is being analyzed and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to make the best of it. Absolutely, yeah. All, all in favor of getting a better experience to them, right? If you understand that's, that's what the they're game. doing, then how do you enable... Everything's experiential at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. That sounds great. So a piece of what we talked about was the, the network becoming more relevant to the business, enabling business activities. I'm curious to hear from, from each of you. I mean, in some cases, the network is the business, right? The, the connectivity is the business. But... If you could share a story around perhaps if your organizations are now recognizing more the importance of the network connectivity and what difference that's made in your life, especially as it pertains to potentially, you know, from a corporate, from the business budgets, et cetera, what that has enabled the business to do or accelerate and or if it's personally had any impact to you as far as getting more of a seat at the table with the powers that be? Well, I, I think the demand is higher on the network now. People are coming with more, more projects that require us to have connectivity, whether it be wired or wireless, and we're being forced to try to come up with solutions to, yeah. to make those projects happen and be successful. Uh, I think from the financial side, they understand um, that we have a robust backbone and um, the speeds are there for what they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of us being agile enough to get those deployed quick enough for what they need. Got it. And when you went to do these most recent, you said a couple of years ago, two years ago, you started doing the shift. Was that born out of a number of challenges and issues that you were having with the old system or was it a need to the recognize that 
everyone's going to need to be more connected. We're going to have more devices, and therefore we need to make these improvements. It's a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, so when we evaluated the vendors at the time, it was either stay where we were or, you know, go to another vendor and see what was out there. And eventually when we, we analyzed everybody that was available to us, uh, Extreme had what we needed at the right price point, and it was... They claimed at the time they could achieve what we needed uh, as far as uh, our, our, our requirements. And uh, so far it's come through. So that's, that's the crux of it. Fantastic. And now when you go forward that you've got that, that they've been able to deliver for you yeah. and you've been able to provide that connectivity, how has that impacted your standing within your team? And when you come forward and say, I can, I can do this, I can deliver that. Well, it helps a lot because when you're presenting a, a, when you're presenting a solution, they, you know, they don't really know what's out there, and right. they're putting a lot of trust in you. So if it does come through successful, that only helps you in your career and your stance at the company, obviously, because you're backing, you know, what you told them was going to work, and it worked. Fantastic. So. Excellent. Yeah, I, c I concur with that last statement, certainly. It's, um, I think for us, being a taxpayer-funded organization, that presents a unique challenge because those revenues for us uh, fluctuate sometimes uh, and how we are allotted you know, funding. And for us, being able to take a, uh, you know, advantage of uh, E-rate, uh, which is educational funding, um, has been a, a huge help for us. And expanding and continuing to expand the use of that is, is what's going to allow us to grow going forward. Um, I think just how education has moved to, again, this delivery model of, of cloud and internet-based applications, we don't see it going away anytime soon. We, we only see it increasing, and I say now, uh, application delivery for us has gone from maybe 10 or 15 percent uh, online to about 80 percent online. And the number of applications and the number of devices connected uh, when I first started in 2010 was probably around uh, 200 devices to now well over 3,000 devices. And many of the end users have multiple devices, of course. So um, that's really the driver for us. And any, any degradation in services becomes uh, an obvious issue and it's what, unfortunately, uh, you can't put the cart before the horse, but it's the cry that we get now having, uh, you know, so many devices in the environment. And we see from an analytics perspective, we're hitting thresholds now uh, and we need to, to grow. We need to, to move beyond uh, where we are now um, and, and try to offload some of uh, the existing bandwidth that we're using to other locations, splitting up networks, uh, you know, changing, uh, you know, routing and, 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 you know, layer three processes to, to alleviate some of the overload. But really for us, it's, it's just the constant delivery of services is, is, is a burden. And if I remember correctly, when we talked briefly yesterday, you had also brought up the fact that no good deed goes unpunished and that now you're picking up all the physical security as well. So thanks for the good job you did with the, <laughs> so, <laughs> the regular network. Yeah, you now building, pick up the wireless, yeah, the wireless we, cameras. We, and we just completed two new building projects. Um, whereas before, uh, things like security cameras, HVAC were a problem of facilities. They are now uh, network devices. Um, so our director of facilities is an old school sort of construction guy and uh, he wants nothing to do, <laughs> to do with <laughs> managing security or uh, HVAC. Uh, so it, a lot of it is now falling on IT, especially with new building automation, yeah. um, the analytics that are being provided in, in uh, security uh, uh, and, and surveillance, uh, things that are going on. Uh, I'm having to learn, obviously, things that are uh, not in my in a wheelhouse as well, so that's, yeah, that's continuous challenges are, are that, bound. That, that brings up an interesting data point. So in a lot of the research that we do, 
we actually cut the data by the age of the respondent. And so you get very different views on technology and how it will help them based on their age. So if you can imagine the facilities, I'm guessing somewhere like me, 50 and older, has a certain view of technology and a certain, um, probably maybe a little bit scared of it, versus a 35 and under who's just grown up with it and are digital native and it's completely natural to them. So obviously another, right, a challenge that now is, has come to. Yeah, I don't fit into the 35 and under uh, demographic, <laughs> but yes, that it, is, it is the challenge of, of now. It, it, all of these, um, what were before, uh, uh, you know, building and, and facilities related technologies are, are totally integrated into IT. Absolutely, very good. Uh, with regard to connectivity, we have two different markets. IX operation is we are dealing with world best operators, engineers. So once we connect, provide a connectivity, they do their own network operate. So it's kind of easy. However, for cloud connectivity, we are dealing with an enterprise market. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily have their like uh, expertise. Yeah. So uh, while we are selling, providing service to them, it's kind of like, difficult. This discovery, they they have a couple of lots of questions. So we, I think, we need some sort of help. I'm thinking of like uh, AI or something mm -hmm. for two reasons. Say, customer has tons of questions. But I want to make sure all, like our sales rep around the road has the same answer, exactly. Yeah. AI helps for that. Right. I do know the example like a French bank has introduced AI and resolved that kind of situation. The other aspect is the, uh, like IoT. Mm -hmm. IoT is basically a data input device. Mm -hmm. It's simply collecting data. Correct. But without AI, what do you do with it? You in analytics, that's mm -hmm. an important key. So now you should have some sort of tool which make your decision based on data. That's where AI comes into play, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so is that something you're looking to yes. start implementing through some machine learning or AI? Something that's kind of key to for next generation, yeah, next generation, yes. Yeah. Excellent, very good. So I think what we wanted to close on, so first of all, thank you. You've been great answers from everyone is you've got an opportunity here where you've got the extreme staff, you've got extreme partners, and, and you've got your peers in the audience. What advice would you give to extreme and to its partners on how to better help you in the journey that you're on to deploy and, and leverage and drive greater, greater productivity and customer experience with the solutions that you have? So what advice would you have for those partners and for extreme for working with you? Okay. As I briefly mentioned before, I have a phenomenal support team from Extreme. That's pretty important. Yeah. If you do deal with some other company, I have to go through tier one operator. Yeah. I have to explain my name is a variable company name. Our configuration is like this. Spend salaries just for that. Yeah. They upgrade, you know, escalate to tier two, tier three. But in our case, we have tier three engineer in front. They know what we what. Like our own team. Yeah. So once we pick up a, pick up a phone, they know what I was talking about. Got it. So do you, you know, may, you better have your own team dedicated to your own customer, mm -hmm. then provide, you know, good service. They customer is with you for, for a long time. I think that's my, my best advice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, having great customer service is always yeah. very helpful. <laughs> yes. Jason? Yeah, again, uh, as a small market customer, I just for extreme to uh, stay the course and, and keep those relationships, they're so important for us. Uh, not, again, not having buying power, I always realize, especially working in IT, spending the money, uh, you know, equates to a, a, a attention from, from your, uh, from the companies that you work with. But for us, uh, we've seen the company grow. I've, uh, you know, I think I'm a, a, a bit nervous to think of what, as the growth continues, I, I just want, want to make sure that those relationships uh, remain intact because uh, they're, they're key to our, our success. Yep, so make sure you're, they continue to stay close to you and, and even though your size may not be the largest, 
you're still very important to them and what you're doing is important, so make sure they, they uh, stay in touch. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'll just echo these gentlemen as well. Uh, support is key, especially yeah. having uh, an intimate relationship with your, your rep as well as you know, when you call GTAC and they're there for you. Um, and I'll say on the sales front, just make sure that you listen to the customer and you offer a solution for the need and not over spec out a solution that's not really necessary and over communicate to the customers. I tell you, as a customer, I love hearing from the rep to be like, hey, is everything okay? Don't just reach out to me when you're trying to sell me something, yeah, you know? Those are just... And coming to events like this, where they can hear... Sure. <laughs> and I'm sure some of this is on. common sense, but just yeah, coming yeah. from a customer, that's... That's, that's great. That's, that's our feeling. Perfect. I mean, that's, that's the important thing. We wanted to... You know, unfortunately, we were given the opportunity by Extreme to ask some of these questions that you wouldn't normally hear at a panel, but I think it speaks to their confidence and their, their field sales, working with their customers, and especially the support that you saw and how highly it's rated, and that's because of responses from people like yourselves who have had that great experience and are able to, able to deliver that forward. So. Uh, excellent. So I think we're, we're out of time now, but I'd just like to thank all of you. If everyone, big round of applause for our panelists. Excellent. All set, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Very good. Thanks very much.